Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. Today I have with me the Kawai MP11. And this is a professional stage piano, and it is professional in every sense of the word. I, when I first got this piano, I thought that with its simplistic layout, it would be a breeze to do everything. And basically what you see is what you get. Well, I was wrong. It is so detailed and in-depth. You can go to all kinds of depths with this to control every aspect of it. To give you an example, um, reverb. Let's just take something as simple as reverb. And a lot of stage pianos have reverb. And some of them, it's just a switch on and off. And as you go up the price scale, it gets a little bit more controllable where you can control what kind of reverb, you know, plate, hall, auditorium, cathedral, uh, concert hall, whatever. And as you go even farther up on the price scale or as they give you more options to mess with reverb, you can control how much reverb or how little of whatever type of reverb you picked. With this one, you can go into a lot more depth than that. So let me just show you something on the screen over here. If I pick reverb over here, I can control, like I just said, the type of reverb, small hall, live hall, cathedral, and so on. There's a few different types. So let's just pick um, a live hall, okay? I can also control the pre-delay. I can mess with that parameter however much I want. In the time and the depth. Now the depth is the most important one. That is basically how much reverb you want to give this thing. So, And as you watch as I increase this. You can hear how much. I like to keep it down here around uh, high 30s, 40s, somewhere around there. And that's just one parameter. That's just reverb. And another one might be EQ. So when I'm, when I'm playing with a digital piano, I like to have my own control over both reverb and EQ. Those are the two most important things to me as a performing pianist, also as a recording pianist. Now EQ, a lot of uh, digital pianos, some don't have it at all. Some will give you a tone control and some break it up into low, medium, high and others will break it up into low and medium one, medium two and high. In the medium one, medium two translating to medium low, medium high. So, and that's all cool, that's fine and dandy, that works. But with this one, you can actually go and see what you're doing. Rather than adjusting and seeing what numbers are going by, you can go into a graph here and actually see what you're doing. So, to give you an example of that, right here, they've got an uh, EQ. And lo and behold, I've got an EQ graph right here. And there's these four knobs labeled A, B, C, D. And A is controlling low, B is controlling high, and C and D are controlling mid, low, and mid, high, or labeled M1 and M2. So So it makes a big difference when you can actually visualize or see what exactly is going on here. So let me move all these back to flat. Because I don't need these right now. Okay, and let's exit out of there. And what you're watching me doing here, this section right here that I've got this particular camera focused on, you've got this LCD screen which is actually a nice decent size because you've got pianos like well, even that expensive Nord Stage 2 
or the Casio Privia Pro Professional Series and a bunch of others. They've got this tiny little screen that's the size of a cigarette. And sometimes it's even less than the size of a cigarette. It's the size of a cigarette without the filter. And granted, you can only exp maybe show one line, possibly two on it, and that's it. But it's tiny. So here you've got a nice thing, big enough to have an actual graph like I just showed you. And on all of the parameters that are editable on this particular unit, you've got these knobs, A, B, C, and D, and you have four corners of the screen. So you've got, in this particular screen, damper resonance on the left, stereo width on the right, brilliance on the lower left and touch on the lower right and the touch is a real nice one because this is where you can change the velocity setting of the keyboard and right now i've got it on heavy plus but you also have heavy and i just passed uh, normal light light plus and then off but in addition to that, you've got user settings one through five. And that's a really cool thing to have because if none of those other settings work for you, you can go into another menu and create your own touch velocity. And it's a little bit different. It's not like the VPC one where you have an actual editor. This will actually have you play starting out from low light touch, going to heavy and how you, however you play that, it analyzes your performance and comes up with a unique velocity setting just for you. And it, I tried it and it actually works and it's really wonderful. I just love that feature about this. Anyway, since this is basically an intro overview, let's go over everything starting with the actual keys. And this keys, the action on these is what sets this piano apart from everything else. Now, before I had this, the very best keyboard action that I have ever played on also happened to be another Kawaii. It was the VPC-1, which is just a controller, nothing else. Didn't have any sounds built in. You have to hook that into another a sound source or a virtual piano running on your computer, and it was great. This keyboard action is a step above that. The other one was called the RM3 and it was the second revision. This is what's called the grand feel. Now these are all wood keys and they have the longest length in the industry. These key sticks are full length and this is modeled right after their EX grand concert series of pianos. You know, the ones that started $150,000 and go over two hundred thousand dollars but instead of hammers at the other end it's uh it's a mechanism to control the digital aspect of this just as though the hammer is hitting a string so that's very unique and because of the wooden key strings being full length and the mechanism to make that just like the ex concert series pianos that's what gives this thing this weight that 71 pounds that's probably the only downside of this but that's much better than carrying something around that's several hundred pounds or actually over a thousand i'm not sure how much it weighs but the other thing is there is a virtual piano technician that actually lives in here and it can mimic everything about that stage that concert grand piano from the lid position being open and closed or anywhere in between to the noise that the damper pedals make to the string resonance to just about everything now if you take that concert grand piano and you put that in your living room it's going to sound one way move it over a foot or two it's going to sound even different put it in a concert hall it's going to sound different again put it in an auditorium bottom line is Every room has its acoustics, and every position where that piano is in that room changes those acoustics. With this, I can actually change all that stuff. I can do stretch tuning. I can do all 
kinds of things that a piano tuner can come over and do with everything. And it's just unbelievable what I can do with this. So let's go over, starting with the, the jacks in the back and what's in the back. So everything is nice and labeled over here so that I don't have to go to the other side of the piano and see what every jack is. So we're starting out with a pair of quarter inch input jacks, quarter inch output jacks, and fixed output. We've got foot controllers, which is the damper and soft pedal and expression pedal. Now, the triple pedal that comes with this takes care of the damper sostenuto pedal as well as the soft pedal. The expression pedal is something else that you would buy. And a lot of uh, digital pianos, some are lacking in that. This happens to have that. And this is excellent because if you're using something like a pad or any other kind of sound like that. You can actually control the volume and, and make it louder and softer with that expression pedal while you're playing so that you can free up your hands to do the playing. And as far as MIDI goes, you can do it through USB or you can have the standard five pin DINs for MIDI in, out, and through. Then you've got the power and the actual AC plug that goes to the wall. Now the nice thing about the power switch, three seconds from the time you turn on that power switch, you are ready to play. And I can't tell you how wonderful that is because there's been times where I have something going through my head and if I'm going to go to, say, something like the Chord Chronos, from the time I turn that on, I'm waiting over two minutes before I can play that piano. Now, granted, that's a workstation. It's apples and oranges in comparison, but that's a long time to wait. And sometimes you lose your train of thought if you come up with an original piece in your head and you want to play it. If you have something like the Nord or Casio Privia Professional Series, those take about 7 to 10 seconds. This is 3 seconds, which is another great plus for moments like that. Even the Kawai VPC-1, which is immediate. Once it's on, it's on. But since it has no sounds of its own, you have to hook it up to an external sound source like a virtual piano on your computer or another instrument that you're controlling by MIDI. And those things take time to set up too. So this is wonderful. And another aspect of what makes that wonderful is I can take a regular USB thumb drive or flash drive, whatever you want to call these, and hook it in to this MIDI slot right here, or excuse me, to the USB slot right here. And I can re record my performance right away, immediately. So I don't lose any time going from the train of thought to turning on the power switch, hitting record, and playing. That is wonderful like that. I, there's probably other instruments that do that, but that is one real big plus of this. Now, going to all the controls over here. Oh, before I do that, let me back up a minute because, like I said earlier, this has a pair of left and right input. They're quarter-inch inputs. And what's good about that is I can hook something up to it. Like, let's say I've got an MP3 player or something else that has something that's already pre-recorded on that. Maybe a, a band sent me a take of what they're doing and they want me to add piano. So they emailed it to me or however else they got it to me. And I'm now playing that on an MP3 player or whatever my sound source is. And I'm feeding it through here. I have a dedicated volume or line in volume control for that line input, which is really cool because when I'm recording something on this piano and they sent me, you know, something that the band has done and they want me to add piano, I can adjust the levels of their recording along with whatever piano I'm adding to while I'm recording at the same time. And it's recording all that stuff. And a lot of MP3 players and things like that have an eighth inch stereo mini plug 
which is like this. And if you get yourself a converter cable, which converts that to left, right, quarter inch, you can plug that into here so you're all set to go. And not only does it include the triple pedal that it comes with that I just mentioned a minute ago, it also includes a real nice music rest that hooks in over here. Really cool. So let's go through what's on the panel here up on the top. The pitch bend and modulation wheels, I mean they're self-explanatory. But the modulation wheel has an extra built-in feature here. The pitch bend wheel, no matter how you use this, when you let go, it returns back to normal. The modulation wheel is not the same. Wherever you leave it, that's where it stays. So whenever that modulation wheel is turned or used, a little LED light comes on to tell you that that modulation wheel is not in the beginning position as it was before. Real good to know because when you're switching to doing another performance or another piece or another section, you see that light, you know the modulation wheel is still on. You can just basically turn it back until it goes off and now you don't have modulation anymore. And I just briefly went through what the line in does. The volume slider that is right next to that controls total volume, and that's the master volume for the entire keyboard. And next to that, you'll see three different sections here. These are music sections. You've got a piano section, an electric piano section, and a subsidiary section, which have things like uh, pads and bass acoustic bass, things like that. There's 40 sounds or instruments in this all together, or variations, I should say. And it's, it's laid out really well. All three of these sections are very similar in their layout. Now the piano, notice the on-off LED here. When I press it, you can see it's off right now. I'm not playing anything. You don't hear anything because none of these three are turned on. If I turn on the piano, so now I have piano. And I have a separate volume control for that piano. And I can actually, with a key range switch over here, I can set it for lower. So it plays to a certain point only the lower section of the keyboard or I can set it to the upper section and then it cuts out when you get to the lower or both and the default is both now why is that important because in some of these other things let's say I've got the subsection I want to turn this on and I want something like a bass. So I'm going to hit the bass section. And I want wood bass and ride. That's good. Okay. And I want to set that up to the lower portion of the keyboard. And as far as the piano, I want to set that up to the upper portion of the keyboard. Now... The lower portion is just going to be the bass and the uh, ride symbol that is accompanied along with that because that's what I chose. And the upper portion is just piano. So you can see where that comes in. Now let's just briefly get these back to normal. Okay, so on the piano section, you've got four different buttons here for what category or type of piano. I've got concert lit up right now, and next to that is pop, jazz, and upright slash mono. Now in the concert, 
There are three different concert grand pianos available, one, two, and three. And if I press one, that is the concert grand. Two is the studio grand. Oh, let's get rid of the, uh, okay. And three is a mellow grand. Let's go back to the concert grand. And it's the same thing with these other categories. If I press pop, now I've got three categories for the pop type piano. And the first one is being pop piano. The second, bright pop piano. And the third is mellow pop piano. So you get the idea. For whatever category of piano you choose, concert, pop, jazz, or upright mono, you get three different variations of that. And you also have an effects section and a reverb section. And if you go to the reverb, like I said, you can choose the reverb type, what, how much delay, the depth, and again, you have four corners, and each one of these knobs, A, B, C, D, controls that respective corner. So if I want to change the depth, I use this. Okay. Now the electric piano is very similar to the piano layout in that you can turn it on and you have the key range, low, lower, upper, and you can choose which category, Tyne, Reed, Modern, Electric, Grand, Slash, Clavic. And for each one of those you have three different variations. And unlike the piano where you can change the effects or the reverb, you have two different effects on the electric piano as well as the reverb but you also have an amp section because the type of amplifier that was used back in the day with electric piano is also important as well as what mic was used and so on and so forth and you have control over all of that thing so <laughs> turn that off. Now, the subsection has things like strings and pads, harps, mallets, and the bass that I just showed you. Now, let's go to the pads. That sounds like a nice pad here. So let's use that with my piano. So now I've just layered piano with a pad just by turning on the piano section and the subsection and choosing what pad that I want. And if there's too much pad here, like I said, each section has their own volume control, so I'm going to bring the pads down. So again, there's 40 different music instruments here, or they're mainly variations of each other. Now, moving on, this control section over here, this is what you're going to be doing when you're playing. So you can adjust all kinds of different things and parameters. You've got that LED screen and each knob labeled A, B, C, D controls the respective parameters in that portion of the corner. And you've got four function switches over here. So if you look at right now, I've got the reverb is up on the screen, but there's a couple other things here. If you look at function one, two, three, four, and they're labeled piano, electric piano, sub, and page up. So whichever one of these that I press, that takes me to that particular category. All right, let's get rid of that. All right. And I've just pressed the edit menu. And this is a cool menu because here I can change a lot of different things. And the one that I really like is this virtual technician right over here, number eight. 
okay now let's go into that and just like having an acoustic piano and having a piano guy come over a piano tuner and change different things about that piano the voicing the stereo width well the stereo width is a little different here you don't have a on a real piano but string resonance damper resonance and let's go to another page hammer delay string resonance fallback stretch you can actually do stretch tuning on this and it's just so cool how many things that you can actually change now when you're in a performance let me exit out of this menu when you're doing a performance how many times have you been in a gig and whatever piano you're playing you accidentally hit a button or a knob and it changes whatever you were playing and you really didn't want to do that this has something called a lock icon over here if I press that I'm going to lock the all these controls except for the volume sliders and the pitch bend and the modulation so whatever I try to change I get this panel lock analog I can't change anything so if I accidentally press stuff it doesn't make any difference the panel is locked and that's a good thing especially if you're on break and you leave this on and some kid comes on the stage and starts pressing things it won't make any difference unless they figure out to press the panel lock to unlock that first so let's go over that and there's global where you can set up the global equalization you can actually transpose and this is cool for a lot of people not for me i mean i've been playing all my life and i have perfect pitch so when i play a certain key i expect it to produce that key but other people if they've learned a song that's in the key of c and your singer wants to sing it in f sharp and you can't do it in f sharp well this is where you press the transpose button and move however met semitones up to F sharp. And now, even though you're playing in C, it's coming out in F sharp. That is a cool thing to have where, you know, your singer absolutely has to do this in a certain key. All right. And, of course, local control, self-explanatory. If you want to use this as a master controller, you press local control, and it disconnects the keyboard from any sound engine that's built into this. So you're basically, at this point, only controlling an external sound source, whether it's a virtual piano on your computer or anything else. Okay. Setups. You can store all kinds of setups, which are whether it's a particular piano sound or any other sound and whatever variations or modifications you've done to that piano or ever, any other sound or you can actually store the entire keyboard whatever you messed with and whatever parameters you've changed you can change that too and store it all right now the recorder function as simple as this looks gives you a lot of functionality not only can you record whatever you're playing here not only can you record whatever you've got on your line inputs so in this particular case I've got a microphone which is you know mic level not line level I've got it hooked up to a TC Helicon voice live touch and the voice live touch converts that over to line outputs and I, I can put that over into my line inputs now I can sing along with myself playing and I'm recording it the whole time without having to bother setting up a computer DAW or having any other external recording source this is perfect for something like that now here's the real killer it doesn't end there whatever you recorded this can become almost like a multi-track recorder in a sense because you can overdub and there's unlimited overdubs so like i said if if a band sends you their latest mix and you're putting it in through the line inputs or maybe you're even having it through the usb however you get it on there you can add the piano part on there 
and you can probably even add your singing as well, whether it's going to be lead or backing vocals or whatever. So this is a lot more than what initially meets the eye. This is really cool. Then, of course, any instrument, you've got a panic button, which can reset everything back to its factory defaults or from the time that you turned it on, or it can reset any particular um, musical selection that you've chosen. And the metronome, that's another one. Everybody knows what a metronome is, but unless you know that this thing has 100 pre-stored drum patterns to it, because there's no indication here. So when I press the metronome, you can see over here on the screen that I've got four choices for these F1 through F4s. Right now it's on click, but if I choose rhythm, now I can go into the drum section. Right now you can see I've got category 16 swing and the variation is funk shuffle. If I want to listen to it, and you'll see the variation is in the lower left so I can choose a different variation. Or change the category altogether. And these things can be recorded with your performance too. So again, I am so impressed with this piano. It's just unreal. And there's a lot more to this, but right now I just wanted to get this across. This is a brief intro. We go into more detail in another video, and I might actually review the actual performance of this thing. But for right now, this thing is a definite winner. I definitely would recommend this to anybody. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.